Last week, we heard of King Jehoshaphat and how he learned from his father, King Asa, to trust the Lord. The Lord blessed King Jehoshaphat for trusting the Lord and seeking the Lord. This week, we are going to hear about King Jehoshaphat's son, Jehoram. Jehoram became king around 848 BC. He was a terrible king. He did great evil on the side of the Lord. The first thing he did when he was established as king was to kill all his brothers. He then encouraged the people of Judah to worship the Baals. Several countries revolted against his rule because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers, as 2 Chronicles 21.10 tells us. But that wasn't the end. Because he would not follow the Lord, God caused the Philistines and Arabians to come up and invade Judah. They took the city of Jerusalem and took away all the things of value and took away all of Jehoram's sons, except his youngest. Yet this was not the end to the sufferings of Jehoram. The prophet Elijah sent a letter to him that said, Thus says the Lord God of your father David, Because you have not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat your father, or in the ways of Asa your grandfather, but have walked in the ways of the kings of northern Israel, and have made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to worship idols, and have also killed your brothers, who are better than you. The Lord will strike you, and you will become very sick with the disease of your intestines, until your intestines come out by reason of the sickness, day by day. Two years after Jerusalem was sacked by the Philistines and the Arabians, what Elijah prophesied came true. Jehoram was struck with an incurable disease of the intestines and was in great pain. He ruled only eight years, and to no one's sorrow he died and his reign ended. How could godly Jehoshaphat's son and godly Asa's grandson be so ungodly? How could Jehoram be so against the Lord? We know part of the reason why. Jehoram's father Jehoshaphat was a good king who trusted the Lord. But Jehoshaphat did have a bad behavior that did rub off on his son. Remember how Israel was split into two countries in the time of Rehoboam? Southern Israel also called Judah, stayed loyal to the line of David. Northern Israel picked Jeroboam to be their king. Well, there had been war between those two countries for around 50 years until the time of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat made peace with the king of northern Israel, whose name was Ahab. Making peace sounds good, doesn't it? Well, Jehoshaphat became friends with Ahab, which was bad. Why is that bad? That sounds good, doesn't it? The problem was that Ahab was an ungodly king who hated the Lord and worshipped idols. King Jehoshaphat, because of his friendship with Ahab, joined with King Ahab in some things that God did not approve of. God sent a prophet to King Jehoshaphat who told him, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? But Jehoshaphat did not take it to heart. He later joined with the king of northern Israel in a business project to build ships to go to a city called Tarshish. What was wrong with that? By doing that, Jehoshaphat was helping the king of northern Israel to do more wickedness. The Lord sent another prophet who prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying that because you have allied yourself with this ungodly king, the Lord has destroyed your works. Those ships they built were wrecked, so they were not able to go to Tarshish. Worse even than this, because of his friendship with Ahab and his desire for peace, Jehoshaphat had his son Jehoram marry King Ahab's wicked daughter. Ahab's daughter was like Ahab. She loved to worship idols and she hated the Lord. This is what influenced Jehoram. Because of his father's friendship with Ahab, Jehoram thought it was okay to act like Ahab. And his wife, Ahab's daughter, encouraged Jehoram even more in wickedness and to turn from the Lord to idols. Do you see how Jehoram was influenced to act just like Ahab? Thus God tells us and warns us about being friends and marrying people who are ungodly. 2 Chronicles 21, 5-6 Jehoram was 32 years old when he became king, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem, and he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, just as the house of Ahab had done. For he had the daughter of Ahab as a wife, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. We know and love Jesus. We trust in Jesus like Jehoshaphat did. But like Jehoshaphat, we also are sinners. We all have sinful habits and sinful attitudes. We don't want our sinful behaviors to influence other people, do we? 
like Jehoshaphat's bad behavior influenced his son, Jehoram. So what do we do? When our sin and sinful behaviors are pointed out to us, we should repent of them and trust that Jesus forgives them and will give us the strength to stop that behavior. Stopping sinful habits is very difficult, but Jesus will help us and does forgive us when we sin. We need to trust that. That brings us to the passage for the week. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Write that down in your heart. Take special note to remember this. If we confess our sins, he, that is Jesus, is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Unrighteousness are things that aren't righteous. They are our sins. Our catechism for the week is the Eighth Commandment. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You want to say it with me this time? You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. What does this mean? We should fear and love God that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, or give him a bad name, but defend him, speak well of him, and take his words and actions in the kindest possible way. Let's say that again, this time with me. We should fear and love God that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, or give him a bad name, but defend him, speak well of him, and take his words and actions in the kindest possible way.